Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on the control of critical suppliers for medical devices, an ISO 1345-2016 perspective. While this topic is also critical for several medical devices regulation, we have chosen to focus on ISO 1345 as it is the basis for quality management system for many regulations today. First, let me introduce myself. I am Florian Torset-Bonfillou, the Director of Regulatory Education and Quality here at GMED North America. I am also a lead auditor for ISO 1345 and European Directors. Let's get started with few generalities about the changes in ISO 1345 2016. The standard is now aiming to reach a broader audience in the medical device actors, from legal manufacturer to subcontractors, to consultant to distributors, some of them being suppliers of the others. With the same goal in mind, the standard now allows an organization to exclude section 6, 7 or 8, where it was only 7.3 before. This also means that if an organization relies on ISO 1345 certification within its supplier control process, they will have to look closer at the certification scope. And last but not least, there is an increased focus on risk management and the applicable regulatory requirements. Both, both of them are found in sections related to supplier control. So to start with, we will go through definitions. What is a supplier? Is there an official definition for it? So there is no definition of supplier in the ISO 1345 2016 standard. However, it does refer to the general definitions found in ISO 9000 of 2015 in which a supplier is defined as an organization that provides a product or a service. In ISO 13485 of 2016, it is specified that a product is the result of a process and that it includes services, software, hardware, and processed material. Where the standard uses product, it can cover either a product and or a service. As for a few examples in the medical device industry, a supplier could be a raw material supplier, a subassembly supplier, a design and or manufacturing subcontractor, but also a consultant or any service providers such as translation company or calibration providers. So these were the definitions found in the ISO standards. However, if you are a legal manufacturer, you're also dealing with local regulation. If the regulation includes a definition, it prevails on the ISO definition. Sometimes definitions are found in guidance documents such as the NBOG document for European Medical Device Directive. Here in the NBOG 2010-1, just as, a, as an example, we have the supplier and critical supplier definitions, with the supplier being an organization or person that provides a product, a service, or information, and which is outside the quality management system of the manufacturer, and the critical supplier being a supplier delivering materials, components, or services that may influence the safety and performance of the device. It is therefore important that each organization defines what a supplier is for them, taking into account the standard, but also the applicable regulation. In terms of responsibilities for the organization, 
The 2016 version of the standard reinforced the requirements that already existed in the previous version and add some more. There are two sections where responsibilities of the company are described for the control of suppliers. Indirectly in section 4.1.5 for the control of outsource processes and directly in section 7.4 for purchasing. In section 4.1, the 2016 version of the standard reinforced the requirement that the organization is responsible of the conformity to the standard for outsource processes and add a requirement to implement controls proportionate to the risk involved and the ability of the external party to meet the requirements in accordance with the purchasing section. This means that if a manufacturer subcontract a subassembly process or a sterilization process, for example, he remains responsible for this process even if completed by another company. The manufacturer will also have to demonstrate controls are in place based on the risk involved. The section 7.4 itself describe the requirement the company shall implement for its purchasing process, including supplier control. We'll go more in detail on this topic later on. Now let's talk more in detail about the supplier control requirements. As previously identified in the 2003 revision of the standard, the organization shall control the selection and evaluation of its suppliers, but also its re-evaluation. This remains applicable with the 2016 revision, in which requirements are now more specific. This means supplier control begins even before making the choice of using one, and continues until the organization stops using the supplier. Let's have a closer look to three main requirements, the documentation, the supplier control criteria, and the risk-based approach. On the documentation side, a documented procedure is required, as well as records of suppliers evaluation, selection, and monitoring. In addition, purchasing information documentation and records shall be in place with specific content that we will look at in a later slide. The type of documentation itself that is required is not a big change. However, requirements regarding content have been added. Something that is much more specific in the 2016 revision is the criteria definition compared to the previous version. Where the 2003 version was calling for criteria, without much more details, the 2016 revision specified that the criteria for the evaluation and selection of suppliers should be based on the supplier's ability to provide products that meet the organization requirements, based on the performance on the supplier, and on the effect of the purchase product on the quality of the medical device. The standard also specifies that the evaluation and se selection criteria should be proportionate to the risk associated with the medical device. What was previously implied is now clearly stated in the standard. It is similar for the risk-based approach that is already implemented by many organizations for the control of suppliers However, there was nothing specific about it in the standard. In the 2016 revision, both the criteria for the evaluation and selection of suppliers and the actions implemented following the non-fulfillment of purchasing requirements shall follow a risk-based approach, proportionate to the risk associated with the purchase product. This means that companies shall consider, when appropriate, having different criteria and different definitions depending the supplier type, using a risk-based approach, as well as different level of actions following an unconformity depending 
of the severity and impact of it. So now if we take the standard itself, starting in section 7.4.1, Purchasing Process. On this slide, you can see where there is a paint splash, all the new additions compared to the 2003 revision. So we find here more specificities about the control criteria with the link to the performance of the supplier and the risk associated with the medical device and also additional requirements related to monitoring with these two new set of requirements. The first one, the organization shall plan the monitoring and re-evaluation of suppliers. Supplier performance in meeting requirements for the purchase product shall be monitored. And the result of the monitoring shall provide an input to the supplier re-evaluation process. Here, supplier control becomes a full process, starting with planning, then monitoring, and finally looping back to re-evaluation. The second set of requirement is for when not all is going as planned, where non-fulfillment of purchasing requirements shall be addressed with the supplier proportionate to the risk associated with the purchase product and compliance with applicable regulatory requirements. There is here an additional requirement to communicate with the supplier about issues that may arise. If we now move to the section 7.4.2, it is not specific to supplier control, but still includes some new requirements that are linked to the supplier initial control. This is where we can find the requirement related to a written agreement linked to change control. Purchasing information shall include, as applicable, a written agreement that the supplier notified the organization of changes in the purchase product prior to implementation of any changes that affect the ability of the purchase product to meet specified purchase requirements. The format choice of this written agreement is left to the organization. Some create contracts, some integrate it in POs. There is no clear requirement here in the standard itself about the format to be used. And then in 7.4.3, it is also not specific to supplier control, but to the verification of purchase product. We can find a link to the supplier evaluation in the requirement link to incoming inspection. The extent of verification activities shall be based on the supplier evaluation result and proportionate to the risk associated with the purchase product. This is where organizations may, for example, adjust their incoming inspection sampling plan based on the supplier's performance with the past deliveries. So even if not all new, the 2016 revision of the ISO 1345 includes more specific requirements related to the supplier control that an organization shall implement. And the goal of these modifications are to increase the harmonization with existing quality system regulatory requirements and ensure consistency between the different texts. But it is also to increase organization suppliers' control in order to meet standards and regulatory requirements. To conclude this webinar, I would like to talk briefly about the transition period. We are now past a year since the publication of the standard. ISO 1345-2016 has a three-year transition period, which means that ISO 1345-2003 certificates are valid until February 28th of 2019. However, to avoid any interruption in its certification, an organization must plan its transition in advance. 
On this slide, you can see the proposed transition plan implemented here at GMED. A transition audit can be organized at the same time as any of your upcoming surveillance or renewal audits. But please note that starting March 2018, all renewal audits will be transition audit to ensure no certification interruption. And from November 2018, all audits will be performed according to the 2016 version to allow issuance of certificates prior to the expiration of the 2003 certificates. An organization can also choose to have a standalone transition audit in addition to its regular audit. And if you have any questions about the certification transition, please contact your certification project manager. Thank you very much for listening to this webinar. If you have any question, don't hesitate to email us at contact at lne-america.com.